ladies and gentlemen, welcome to Poland Daily History. Today we are at Hotel Europejskie, one of the most expensive hotels in all of Poland. The secret to keeping such a prestigious status relies on preserving history and providing luxurious accommodation. Today we will learn more about one of the most exclusive jewels of Warsaw. Our guest today is Mr. Xaver Wąsowski, a direct descendant of Aleksander Przeziecki, who decided to build Warsaw's first luxury hotel of international standards in 1855. After returning to Poland from the US in the early 90s, Mr. Wąsowski has been documenting the long and interesting history of Hotel Europejski. So in the 1920s, and specifically 1918, where Poland finally regained its independence, it's a time of change in, in the world. Mm -hmm. And I was wondering if the hotel also have its own changes to get with the times and more advances. I, I think in the spirit of the times, the fact that uh, Poland finally was, after 123 years, an uh, independent nation, right. there was uh, cause for celebration. So the mood of the people changed, certainly. And this was uh, evidenced by the amount of balls that started to take place. Balls. There, there were all, always certain celebrations, but all of a sudden there was uh, the fashion balls that started to take place, New Year's Eve balls. The carnival season was certainly the uh, season for balls. Mm -hmm. The Hotel Europejski, being um, the most elegant uh, hotel, had uh, the space and uh, the people that uh, certainly for generations that had been coming to fill its ranks, the actors or the journalists or the people from the military also uh, came here often. Mm -hmm. Also, some of the changes that took place in the hotel included the building of two ballrooms in the courtyard of the hotel. So there was this additional space, uh, very nice, that, uh, that representative where people wanted to uh, celebrate and um, uh, the press also had a field day, you know, that, that was an occasion for, to, to come to photograph uh, all the stars of the mm -hmm. day. Uh, there were, the fashion balls were actual competitions. Right. Uh, you know, the, the best dressed, the, the nicest dress. So, like today you have the uh, red carpet walk before the Oscars. Right, right. That's what you had here. Uh, so, women would come with their uh, dresses. The dressmakers would uh, have a competition. Right. That was their way of advertising also because their pictures would end up in the press. So I'm actually pretty interested in the balls that you just mentioned mm -hmm. and it seems like a very glamorous event and I was wondering, are, are they like uh, cyclical or you know who are the ones that organize them? What are the more specific details? There was a lot of different societies that okay. existed in Warsaw at the time and uh, they would have their uh, yearly events that they wanted to take place and obviously in the hotel. Mm -hmm. So there was, um, apart from the fashion balls, which I mentioned, uh, the uh, New Year's Eve balls, there were societies such as the Charity for the Blind. And they held an annual ball also during the carnival time. Mm -hmm. There were various international societies, for instance, the Polish American Society. Mm -hmm. They held their uh, ball. There was a, a Russian ball that was held. There were uh, various other literary societies or actors' uh, guilds that also had their balls. But time-wise, they were pretty much uh, in the carnival season. Mm -hmm. So that was every weekend there was one or two balls. And then there was the, of course, Lent, you had no balls. Mm -hmm. uh, then during the summer season, uh, in the courtyard, uh, there were various events held, such as fashion shows, mm -hmm. also covered by the press. So we have many examples of this uh, to this day that we find in the press of the time. That was just like today, whether it's the paparazzi or the press, you know, they, they were there. The, the stars of the day were, were showing up. Right. Uh, they had the grandest outfits. The men were in their frocks or in their uniforms. Mm -hmm. And uh, that was, uh, well, that was the high society of the day. And um, that was the way they celebrated um, as today. So by observing the pictures of the parties and the balls that you mentioned, one thing I noticed is the amount of men in military uniforms. That was a normal, uh, let's say, uh, activity or career in many of the men, certainly in, in the aristocracy and the upper echelons of society. Mm -hmm. uh, that was just a normal thing. 
And the landowners didn't sit on the land. They, they were in the military. They, they were officers, uh, usually. Uh, and so when an event took place, mm -hmm. obviously you came in your best uniform with your medals and you presented yourself as one would today. Uh, mm -hmm. Although today military uh, officials are, let's say, a, just a part of society. Right. Whereas then it was much more broad uh, aspect of society to, to be in the military. Mm -hmm. Especially, you, you have to realize at times, uh, bef between the wars, literally, uh, war and the military was much more um, integral component of society. Right. The Hotel Europejski was not just famous for its balls and nightlife. In the daytime, different groups would meet in cafes and restaurants on the ground floor. Journalists, literary groups, chess players and high-ranking military officers all had their own favorite spots in the hotel. So as we know, in the interwar era, it's not just like party till the very late nights. There's also social activities in the morning in Hotel Europeska. And I was wondering, like, for example, the cafe, what are the social interactions and who are the people that would frequent the place? The place was happening, uh, whether the hotel, whether the uh, art scene that took place, uh, but also, as you mentioned, the cafes, the restaurants, mm -hmm. these were places where uh, people frequented not just hotel guests, but the citizens of Warsaw right. uh, and travelers. Uh, there were various crowds that came. It was a magnet for different types of crowds in different areas. The Lux uh, coffee shop mm -hmm. was especially popular with the journalist crowd from the Kurier Warszawski, the daily uh, from across the street. Mm -hmm. um, so you had Bolesław Prus who would come uh, and others such as literary crowd from Skamander, Picador. Uh, they had their little tables, they, they always knew where to sit. And there were poets that would come to discuss their uh, views on life. There were the chess players that had their little corner that, where they played chess or had their tournaments. Mm -hmm. There were the pool players the, uh, on the pool tables. In the cafe, the hotel cafe, not the Lourdes coffee shop, uh, with the outdoor awning and the tables outside, uh, which gave on to the Platz Piłsudskiego, you had the military that had their favorite tables. Mm -hmm. And so they would discuss their military issues and you would see the high-ranking officers uh, especially in the 30s when uh, the issue of what's happening to the West in Germany became a hot topic. So you would see um, various crowds interacting, mixing, rubbing elbows. Mm -hmm. um, it was the place to get your gossip. Right. If you wanted to find out what was going to happen, mm -hmm. the, the people that were making things happen were meeting here so you could meet them. Right, so it's basically where people from high society mingle and get to know each other, socialize, network, and... Yeah, I suppose networking is uh, <laughs> what you would call it from back there. Yeah. Um, but they had their little groups, okay. sometimes very integrated mm -hmm. amongst themselves, uh, not necessarily mixing with others, no. but uh, it was a very egalitarian society. I, see. Uh, I would allude that to the Pszczekonski Zakonski bar that was here okay. uh, during many years where people would come in, they would drink, they would eat, mm -hmm. they would rub elbows, and they, uh, there was a mix, and uh, there was an equal footing mm -hmm. uh, amongst everyone. So before the war, it was like that also, where th the common ground of the Europejski allowed them to be together. Hotel Europejskie has 150 years and counting a very interesting history. And the fact that the history is preserved and the personal touch of the place is what gave it the standard for the best hotel in Poland and has set the standard ever since. I'm your host, Benjamin Lee. I'll see you next time on Poland Daily History.